and thank you so much for taking the time out to listen. We are continuing with this series on what the enemy is doing, right? What the enemy is up to, to unfortunately ensnare believers, put them on that unrighteous, ungodly path. And so here we are, a message about testing, testing the spirits. You're going to need to because the enemy is going to test you. The enemy is testing people right now, testing to see if you love God, if you are really walking with the Lord. Do you really love your family like you claim? Do you really care about the people? Do you really want that business that's supposed to help the people? There's a lot of that. Eh, I mean, is that something that God really wants you to do? I mean, there's so many other things, you see. He's testing you. And God is allowing this to happen because, of course, through much test and trial, you will know what God wants from you. Through much test and trial, you will know whether or not you are strong enough to endure. Through test and trial, you will know whether or not you truly love, care, and want to protect people like you claim. Without a test, you don't appreciate until that person's gone. There's the test right there. Without a test, you don't appreciate what we're telling you. Until you click off a message and then there's the test. I'll be, <laughs> says someone. She just spoke about and no, no sooner than I stopped listening to her. If everything she had been telling us didn't take place. That's God. I'm just a mere mortal here today. Gone tomorrow. Ashes to ashes. Dust to dust. But God knows the future. God didn't just show up. Some folks, they had to allow God to speak to them spirit to spirit. And this is why these messages are so timely for some of you all. And that's why I want you to continue to listen because God is after some of you all. You are not just called. You are the chosen ones. Hallelujah and praise be to the one true God. I'll never forget when God used an evangelist to tell me I wasn't just called but chosen. And I thought, wow, that sounds good until I was like, wait a minute, what exactly does that mean? And there comes a lot with being chosen. That's why so many people will reject God because that means they got to give up some things. And so here we are. We are testing the spirits. Enemy shows up and he's testing you with the lie. He's testing you with the seduction. He's testing you with the temptation. He's testing you by telling you that what you see isn't what you see, what you see and what you hear isn't what you hear. He's testing you when he brought that man who, excuse me, who is he and why is he here? He's testing you by having somebody who doesn't have a lot of experience show up and it turns out. They're not even willing to want to learn. Oh, Lord Jesus. He's testing you when that child is disrespectful. They called you what? They said, what about you? Now, see, I could be on a charge right now. I could have caught a case. Hallelujah. I passed that test. There's many a parent that didn't pass that test. That's why we don't encourage parents, grandparents, friends, coworkers, or anybody else to exact violence. OK, on anyone, because here's the problem with that. There are some that, yeah, they may have gotten away with something for a time until they don't. Whether it's on this side or on the other side. And then there are those who their freedom is gone. 
Yeah, so that child cussed at you, acted up, you beat the you-know-what out of them, you told them everything under the sun, you dragged them, did everything, and now you're doing time for that child. And nine times out of ten, that's what the enemy put that child up to doing because you were speaking too much God. You were speaking too much truth. You see, it was a trap. Can I tell somebody that argument the other day was a trap. The dispute with the coworker was it's trap. And some of you all fell in a trap because you wouldn't shut up. Some others, you fell in a trap. And that trap. Now you caught a case. Lord Jesus. Sometimes it's a simple thing. Like one day the Lord spoke to me, said, don't move the car. Don't move the car, but I'm going to help so-and-so out. I helped so-and-so out. I ended up getting into an accident. He knew what was going to happen. You see, why would you go against the Lord? I know why, because we're, we're made of flesh because we sin because we're weak because we had a lot going on because that day for me, I was just tired. I was just tired and I was just going through the motions, just wanted to do something nice because I had done something nice the night before. And I just wanted to keep the niceties going. Can I tell you that there are times where God says that we're not being nice today. We're just going to say no. Okay. Powerful lesson to be learned. When you feel in your gut, "Mm, this isn't good. When you feel like it's a tug of war. When you feel like normally I would, but not today. I'm feeling some kind of way. Believe that. Don't let that person convince you to go head on and move that car. Don't let that person convince you to go somewhere that, yeah, maybe we ordinarily go, but not today. You see, and I don't care what their title is, and I don't care that they are your son, your daughter, and all the other times they were right. Yeah, but at some point they will be wrong about something. At some point you're going to reach a crossroads where it's going to be daughter, son, auntie, mama, grandmama, whoever over here. And then there's God. I think I'm going to listen to God. Yeah, very, very wise choice. Absolutely. There is the test that's coming for some of you all. Okay. And when the test comes, I need you to test back. Okay. When the test comes, I need you to test back. We're going to test the spirits. Okay. He, she, they, it, whatever the flavor of the week, whatever the pronoun, they're going to show up. They're going to test you. They're going to see. Mm Mm-hmm. So you say that you're a believer or you say that you uh, trust in or you say that you're one of faith. Okay. uh Uh-huh. We're going to see about that. We're going to test back. Beloved, do not believe every spirit. Okay. Don't believe it. Don't believe every spirit. They will follow up with something that sounds a bit godly. Right. So you're a believer, huh? Yeah, I'm a believer. Okay, great. So then you believe in and they'll pull a scripture out. And that scripture, you'll go, wait a minute. They're not reading the rest of that scripture, of course. But they pulled that scripture out. And they're using that scripture to get you to do what? To do whatever they want you to do. And the minute you say no, they're going to do what? They're going to say that you're not a believer. But most believers do this. Most believers do that. Uh Uh-uh. That was the demonic that was at work. Okay, that's why you test back. You say, wait a minute. Thanks for pulling out that scripture. But what about these scriptures here? Does these scriptures correlate with this scripture? Or why is this scripture a bit different? Maybe you don't know that much about the Bible. And so now somebody got to break it down for you. Okay, but we want to pray and ask the Lord for guidance. We want to be able to pull out the scriptures for ourselves. Okay, thank you for that. Why are you in such a rush for me to get an answer, give you an answer? Uh-huh. Because you call yourself trying to put me in some kind of trap. You know what? I'm not even going to go for this right now. You're not really genuinely wanting to know about the Lord and all that comes with the Lord. You know, are you asking me this question because you intend on making a difference in your life? Well, maybe. Well, maybe. Okay, sure, sure. Yeah. To do what? To ultimately draw you into a debate. No, we're not debating scripture, especially with the ungodly, especially when you see that there is some signs, some colors, some something about that person that's off. Come on. 
So we're not going to believe every spirit. They come back and they say, sure, I'm going to go ahead and I'll answer the question. And they go and they start breaking it all down. But it sounds like they're attacking your faith. Okay. Sounds like they got mm, some issues from long ago. Maybe mommy, daddy rejections, you know, maybe the church rejected them. Maybe God didn't answer a prayer. Maybe they lost a loved one. Ooh, they're just nasty right now. Right. They've got their attitude. They're mean spirited. They call themselves wanting to just ah, rip you to shreds. Are we going to sit up there and entertain them? This is where the turn the other cheek situation shows up. You see, oh, you're real disrespectful right now, right? I'm going to turn that other cheek. Turning that other cheek, sometimes for some of you all, you're thinking about like a person fighting, right? And they turn the cheek. Yeah, hit me right there. No, I'm talking about I'm turning my cheek and I'm going in another direction. Hallelujah. I'm going in another direction. We're taking it next level with these scriptures today. (laughs) Oh, turn the other cheek, Lord. You told me turn the other cheek. That's right. We're going to turn that cheek and walk away. We're not going to sit here and argue with people about foolishness, right? I don't have a lot of time. I keep telling people I don't have a lot of time on this planet. Don't sit up here and start trying to debate and all that other stuff in the comments. There's too many people and too much thing, too many things I got to do for the Lord. Sorry. It's like the administrative assistant who I got all these executives I'm working for right now. Okay. I don't have time to sit here and argue with you employee about this new system about timesheets about I don't you see we have to mind our time and these spirits think that they're going to draw us away from our time into all these unnecessary arguments and stupidity that's not what we do And even if this is a genuine person who really wants to walk with the Lord, didn't we study and show that self-approved? They need to study and show that self-approved. Look, we're in the classroom. Okay. I'm taking my test. You were supposed to study for your test. Just like me. Stop looking over my shoulder, asking me to give you the answers. You get into your Bible. I had to put the time in. You need to put the time in. I had to fast. The Lord had called me to fast. You need to go without eating. (laughs) <laughs> oh, I can't do that. Oh, yes, you can. If you really want to go deep with the Lord. Oh, yes, you can allow the Lord to lead you into that fast. But what I'm not going to do is keep spoon feeding answers, especially to somebody who. You playing games right now, you see, so we test the spirits, we test it back, we see, okay, so you got a lot of questions. Yeah, I got a lot of questions. Okay, when's the last time you read your Bible? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. We're going to ask questions. That's testing back. So you are fascinated about faith and walking with the Lord and all that good stuff. Yep, absolutely. And that's why I'm asking you this. And I'm asking you that. Well, that's great. However, I need you to spend some time with the word. But I did. I read the word and it said this, that and the other. Okay, great. So what did you receive from reading the word? It's not about me right now. It's about you. Well, why does it have to be about me? Because I asked you. Oh, now we're getting a little defensive. There we go. We test the spirits. This person isn't operating in a good headspace. Okay. I don't know what's going on with them in their mind, but I smell something going on here. Like an argument, like eventually they're going to start cussing at me and saying, that's why I don't like you Christians. You're freaking idiots. Ah!" (laughs) Okay. You know what? We got ourselves a winner here. Look, once again, you got to test people. See what they're about. See what they're made of before we go. And so, yes, absolutely, I'm going to help you out. Does the psychologist do that? Does the psychiatrist do that? Does the doctor start blabbing off the mouth telling you about every itty bitty thing? If they do something wrong with them, okay, in their mind, something is indeed wrong with them. And I don't suggest that you continue to sit down with that counselor, life coach or whatever, if they're spending a whole lot of time talking about themselves. No, I am paying you or I am sitting down before you, whether I'm not paying or whether I'm paying or not, but you need to be talking to me about me, asking me questions about me. What are we doing talking about you? Now I'm the counselor. (laughs) 
So lots of tests back going on, right? We're asking questions. We're observing. Sometimes we're not asking anything. We're just observing. And then we excuse ourselves. Okay. Um, I think I've had enough of what, what do you mean? You just sat down for the job interview. Yeah, I did. I just looked over your shoulder. I noticed some things back there and I could tell that this is going to be the type of atmosphere that is going to give me a lot of trauma and drama and I'll be up late at night and I'm trying to stay away from that. Thank you though. Thank you so much for your time. <laughs> bye bye. What? Sometimes the test isn't about the person. It's about let's look at the environment. Okay. Let's see what is happening here. Let's not be so engrossed in. I got to make this money. I got to get this money. Ah, no, let's be about what is happening around us being front and center, paying close attention, being observant, the who, the what, the when, the where, the how. Okay. When you see people move and how they operate, mm -hmm, you know how you should move. Okay. And some people are moving how other people operate. And that's why they're going down a slippery slope. I move when you move. You sure you want to move how he moves? <laughs> Lord Jesus, and a, and a wife who knows that her husband is cheating, she knows the difference in his hips. That's for somebody, ooh, deeply personal, but that's for you. You see, there's a shift. Uh-oh, something's different here. Believe your gut. He's not moving like you move. Have been all along. It's a little choppy, a little zigzag, a little strange, right? Uh-huh. And so we test the spirits. Something you want to talk about? What do you mean? Hmm. Things are off. Things are a bit different. Ooh, he's on red alert. What do you mean? What, what do you mean? Why are you getting so defensive? Why are you getting so defensive? Uh-huh. Well, I'm just asking. Or cool, calm, and collected. He's not going to do that because he's already been in this <laughs> situation many times before. He knows to just sit back and go, I don't know what you're talking about, baby. You know I love you. <laughs> nah, believe your gut. And then you walk. You watch how he walks. Walking a bit different. And you sniff a little closer when he comes home. Mm -hmm. You can test spirits without once again announcing, Hey, this is a test, everybody. <laughs> All right, beloved, do not believe every spirit, but test the spirits to see whether they are from God. That man brought a demon into that bedroom. That's why that woman is feeling a bit off. Okay. For many false prophets have gone out into the world. We've got the false prophets who are international and national. Okay. No, their titles are not prophets. They are leaders. Okay. Rulers. They are princes. They are priests. They are all these other titles, but at the end of the day, they're false. Okay. They give you a false narrative. They give you false news. They give you false hope. They give you false reports. They are paid to give you false everything. The handlers that are behind these false quote unquote, quote unquote, prophets or leaders, these handlers tell them what they are supposed to do. They have scripts. Nowadays, we got all sorts of tools out here that create scripts. Many of your YouTubers who are top notch YouTubers use scripts. Okay. Some of them go off script sometimes, but many of them, everything is planned from the beginning to the very end. Some of them will tell you that now, whether you truly got value or not, well, it all depends. Did you test what you learned? You see? Testing comes in all sorts of ways, saints as well as sinners. And so we test what people say. We test what they do. You know what, Nicole, what you're telling me, I'm going to use this. Good. Go use it. See how, what it does, how it does, how it moves. <laughs> okay. For some of you all, testing was like yesterday. You're already in a testing period. How do I know I'm in a testing period? Because every time you turn around, something is testing your nerves, <laughs> getting on that last nerve. Oh, okay. You're being tested with the children. You're being tested with the spouse. You're being tested at the workplace. I don't need, I don't want you to cave under pressure. I've had people reach out to me. 
They're caving. That's not what we're doing. We're building soldiers. Stop caving to the pressure. Stop caving to the temptation. Stop caving to the he say, she say. Stop caving to the insecurities. Okay. And the fears and the worries. Some of you all, I told you before, God is moving on you to unplug. You got to unplug in order to re re-energize and to recenter. Some individuals reached out to me. They said that video that they saw me in, wow, you look refreshed, right? How did I get that way? I had to unplug. I wasn't like so engaged and so wrapped up into everything. You, you see, that's why sometimes I go away for a little while. And sometimes I just put everything on autopilot and I just have the messages just play. And then I take my month or take two months, you see, or three months. You've got to be re-energized and re-centered in order to be ready for the fight, be ready for the testing. Okay. If I'm tired all the time, I'm going to fail tests. Some of you all, I keep failing everything I do. I just can't seem to get it right. When do you pull away and say, okay, let me reevaluate everything that I've just learned. Is this going to work for me? Okay. Right now I reevaluated some things. I'm like, well, that's really not going to work for me, but that was a great sales pitch, but at least I know how to use that tool. You see. You pull away to think about things. You pull away to see if you're really going to be dedicated and you're going to put the time in and the effort. First John 4, 1 through 6. Beloved, do not believe every spirit, but test the spirits to see whether they are from God. For many false prophets have gone out into the world. By this, you know, the spirit of God, every spirit that confesses that Jesus Christ has come in the flesh is from God. Let's just skip everything else. I got it. I'm going to digress and I'm just going to say, do you believe in Jesus manager, boss, owner, leader, national leader, international leader? Do you believe that Jesus Christ came in the flesh and is from God? Huh? <sighs> okay. Thank you so much for your time. What? Thank you so much for your time for this particular project. Uh, I'm not going to need your help all because all right next time I'm going to just tell a lie you don't want to do that you don't want to do that but thank you for your time though you see there are many who have problems with Jesus and therefore when they have problems with Jesus they have problems with the people of faith and therefore if they have problems with the people of faith they have problems with our messages our messages that come from God himself Many of them, right? Some of them is just practical, good old fashioned information to help the next person. But when we are praying and asking the Lord for guidance, we're asking that he put in our spirit, not just knowledge, wisdom, healing, health, helping other people, like what we pray for many of you all on this channel. You know, but we also need God's help when it comes to testing, whether somebody is in fact of light or of darkness, because you can't see sometimes, sometimes you can, sometimes you can't. Hallelujah. Glory be to your name. O heavenly father, every spirit that confesses that Jesus Christ has come in the flesh is from God. And every spirit that does not confess Jesus is not from God. I know I hurt somebody's feelings. I got to read what scripture says. This is the spirit of the antichrist, which you heard was coming and now is in the world already. Little children, you are from God and have overcome them for he who is in you is greater than he who is in the world. They are from the world. Therefore, they speak from the world and the world listens to them. Hence, look at all those numbers out there on all those different platforms. They're from the world. They're doing worldly things. Okay. Itching ears. Just tell me what I want to hear. Don't be telling me about all this other stuff, girl. <laughs> Make me laugh. <laughs> Make me cry. Just don't tell me about Jesus Christ. Okay. Is that what we're doing? 
not the believers you better not don't anger god the few gifts that he gave you he'll take them away first john four and three and every spirit that does not confess jesus is not from god this is the spirit of the antichrist which you heard was coming and now is in the world already the antichrist is in the world already this is not old school back in the day same old same old regurgitated no this is real what is that feeling why is people doing some of the most despicable ugly dark things to each other this is crazy why do people act so selfish and, and ignorant and mean-spirited and i mean look at how they were back in the day compared to how they are now because antichrist is in the world <laughs> that's why it's frustrating we keep telling people this they want to ignore stop ignoring and just take it for what it is second peter chapter 2 verse 1 but false prophets also arose among the people so not only do we have the antichrist but we got the false prophets once again who did what arose among the people just as there will be false teachers among you this is somebody's word right now hopping from channel to channel looking at numbers associating numbers with how successful somebody is can i tell you that's how unsuccessful because once again there's a lot of reach in the world but not for the right reasons and God showed me that in the spirit. It's not for the right reasons. Algorithm has certain favor on certain individuals who's, who talk in certain conversation that they don't even recognize or realize. But it feeds into agendas. But false prophets also arose among the people just as there will be false teachers among you who will secretly bring in, listen to this, and this is what AI is doing. If you ask certain questions of AI, you'll notice who will secretly bring in destructive heresies, even denying the master who bought them, bringing upon themselves swift destruction. So it's not just human beings at work. It is technology too. We got our work cut out for us first the, the, but we also as we got good technology we also got evil technology we got good people and we also got evil people of course none are good but the father but for purposes of describing decent human beings there you have it right so we got the side of light we got the side of darkness we got people who say please and thank you and we got people who roll their eyes and get an attitude and talk about whatever you know those entitled ones we got people who I love you in the family. And we got other people who I love who myself. This is what we have. And so if we got this and we know we got this, wouldn't it make sense to test before we do business, before we sign contracts, before we say we're going to help somebody? What exactly are you doing with this money? What exactly are you doing Hanging out with this one and that one. I cannot trust you. And I'm not going to offer or open up my door to. You got to draw that line in the sand for some of you all. You're not doing it. The enemy keeps winning. The enemy got plans. Mm, Lord Jesus. We're going to test everything. And hold fast what is good. Hallelujah. That's First Thess Thessalonians 5.21. And mind you, these scriptures are out of the English Standard Version of the Bible. It's easier for people to digest as opposed to the King James. That is why I read second Corinthians 11 and 14. And no wonder for even Satan disguises himself as an angel of light. Okay. So Satan shows up and he tells you, I got something for you. You go, wow, I'm so excited, right? Satan's not going to look like Satan. Not the way you saw him when you were a little kid in those little children's books. He shows up in the form of a relative. He shows up in the form of a daughter, a son, a copycat, if you will, in the spiritual realm. In reality, it could very well be the flesh showing up that is weak, that has been messing with all sorts of interesting things. First John, we already uh, talked about, right? Chapter four. We're moving on to 1 Timothy 4 and 1. 
Now the spirit expressly says that in later times, some will depart from the faith by devoting themselves to deceitful spirits and teachings of demons. Many, many entertainer has received teachings of demons. And that was because they wanted to get better at their craft. Satan has this little deal with them. Okay. I know it sounds crazy. Don't shoot the messenger. I'm just delivering the message, but they make these deals in the occult realm. Those who are witches, warlocks, mediums, and spiritists, they know this. You, believer, need to know. And so they get themselves mixed up with these sorts of things. And then, of course, the devil always asks for some kind of sacrifice. Okay? And it's not necessarily a sacrifice that some of you all would want to uh, be a part of, support, and could even get some folks put away. And so here, they will do these sorts of things. And the, the upper, the upper echelons know this all too well, that the gifting will come upon certain individuals. Recording devices are all around. People who study the arts are all around. Um, scientists, doctors, wizards, and warlocks, and all sorts of people all around receiving information from the one who is providing it through the alternative realm. The spiritual realm okay now everybody gets together they put together whatever the invention is whether it is a rebranded artist with two or three other names whether it is a invention of sorts that is ultimately designed to kill steal and destroy but the demonic entities sometimes they have their energy through relics that were stolen. Okay. Relics that open up pathways, portals, doors, so forth in the spiritual realm. Someone becomes possessed. Someone has this unexplainable type of gifting, but then ultimately destroyed by the very things that uh, it received or he or she received okay i know this is like wow we went from just simply testing to now yeah because if you don't pay close attention you will be swept by it you can be an agent you can be supportive and not even realize it stop in the future telling people to do things with their bodies okay and that goes for many of you all who did this stop that is not what you should be doing in terms of what people who have both good and evil dwelling within them who are very much a part of the occult realm are telling you to do okay because it's only getting uglier and it's getting more dark and they're really going after believers slowly but surely Long time ago, I watched The Matrix. I saw that black woman sitting at the table in The Matrix. And uh, some of you all remember um, remember the scene. And she knew. She knew that her time was coming. And many of us believers, we know our time is coming because of the truth that we speak. You see. But in the meantime, though, God wants as many people to know until he doesn't want them to know. Okay. Matthew 24 and 24 for false Christs and false prophets will arise and perform great sins and wonders so as to lead astray, if possible, even the elect. So some individuals who are on the side of darkness are listening to the children of darkness and then they're being led astray to their own destruction. I know complicated, but that's what's happening for some of them. Then there are others who they're believers in God. But they're believing false Christs and false prophets because these false Christs and false prophets said that they too were believers. Okay. Nothing more than Judas's. And of course, we've got those individuals that are just confused by it all. And so they just simply say, I don't want anything to do with any of this faith business. Look, you know, doing that is only going to just further cause problems for you in the future because you're going to be one of the agents that is going to continue to talk all sorts of talk 
that ultimately ruin people. So, of course, the demonic wants you, you know, because you're ignorant. You don't know what's going on behind the scenes. You don't bother to read or do research. You don't want to check real data, not made up data, fake data. You don't want to have boots on the ground to go visit some people who have been sick and shut down and lost and depressed as a result of things that they've done the past few years. Okay. So, look. I know it's hit or miss. A lot of this stuff that shows up is hit or miss. Well, nothing happened to me, but something happened to this person. And nothing, you know, but something, you know, and we're coming back into that again. Many people have been warning across the board about this sort of thing on alternative platforms. And it is going to happen again in different ways. And some, there are plans already in motion at the time of this recording so it's all the more reason why i need people to test the spirits test the salesperson on what they're saying before you sign the contract and look at the apr look at the interest rates don't be so caught up in your feelings that you sign something where you're ending up paying 30 and 40 percent in interest there are those who you're so excited you're so excited about sending your child here, there, and everywhere when it comes to education. But many of us, we saw the traps a long time ago, a long time ago. And now, fast forward, can't afford a house, can't afford, you know, too much of anything without it being a significant struggle. Okay? And many of us did not end up working in what we went to school for because it was outdated before we even left college. I remember when my stomach dropped, my heart raced, and I had tears in my eyes to find out that the program that I had been a part of for so many years in college, they told me was outdated. And that they were no longer going to support that program. And I said, well, what am I supposed to do? They said, well, all you can do is just take more classes. I've already been in college for six years. What are you talking about? Because other stuff over time was showing that, oh, I'm not going to be able to get a job in this. Oh, better switch. Oh, looks like I'm not going. And then I got to a point where I burned myself out. Okay. Lord Jesus. So we got to test, we got to test the uh, marketing that's out there on what's the latest, the greatest, the best. Why are they marketing that? That's your question. Why are they marketing that? Why are they pushing everybody to pay for this? You see. And then at some point, no, I'm not going along with the program. I'm not doing it. I could see if it was a benefit, but I'm seeing a lot of people dropping off that bus. Okay. I'm seeing a lot of people. That is uh, not getting the results that the marketing team said that they were going to get. I'm seeing lawsuits. So no, uh -uh. I'm not talking that. I'm not saying that. And you can just go shove that. (laughs) Woo, Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. God is giving somebody some power right now because they can plug in some of the things that I'm talking about. And they know where their company has used them and abused them. Mm -hmm. So once again, we're testing the spirits. You see 2 Timothy 4, 3 and 4. God warned us, told us our messages were not going to be well received. And he used this scripture. For the time is coming when people will not endure sound teaching. But having itching ears, they will accumulate for themselves teachers to suit their own passions and will turn away from listening to the truth and wander off into myths. And that's what happened over the years with some of my used to be subs. They went off. Some of them started their own channels. But the thing is, is that we're not to wander off into myths. We are, we are to stick with what God wants. You understand? Stick with what God wants. 
Yes, there comes a time where we just outgrow our teachers and we move on and God moves us. But as we are growing, we have to understand that we are not to leave God behind to chase after algorithms, to chase after monies. I can't stress that enough. Yes, there's a business aspect to a lot of things, right? I have a, a business YouTube channel and that's resourcerundown.com. But when it comes to spiritual things, right, we're going to take the spiritual, what God has moved on our spirit, and we're going to incorporate that into the business, into the family, into how we relate to one another, right? But if we don't, we fall by the wayside, just like the world, and just like the Antichrist will. When it comes to the battle, the fight, right? We're testing the spirits. The spirits don't like it. They got an attitude. They're mean spirited. They're coming after our heads, what have you. Ephesians 6 and 12 says, for we do not wrestle against flesh and blood, but against the rulers, against the authorities, against the cosmic powers over this present darkness, against the spiritual forces of evil in the heavenly places. That's who I'm wrestling against. I'm not looking at the human being. I'm not looking at the one with the nasty little attitude. I'm looking at what is controlling that thing that is within. That's causing that person to become an enemy of mine. Okay. And some individuals know that spiritual battle, battles, spiritual warfare, it works. They've done their share of investigations. They've been around some of the most powerful people. It works. Mind control works. Being able to get into somebody's head that you win them over. And the next thing you know, they're like, what do you want me to do for you? And they're willing to risk their life for you. You see? Powerful, powerful gifts are among us. And God says, those gifts are not just about what the devil got going on over on his side, Satan, the children of darkness. He said that I've granted you those gifts, but not for evil, but for good. Hallelujah. And some of you all, God has distributed his share of gifts for you. But there are those who are going to want you to use those gifts for other things. And we do not do that. Okay. But there's a lot of money at stake. And what exactly are we going to do with this? You see, you have every right to ask questions. Okay. Your family has every right to be concerned about you. We have deceivers, right? Manipulators. Second John one and seven for many deceivers have gone out into the world. Those who do not confess the coming of Jesus Christ in the flesh. Such a one is the deceiver and the antichrist. That is what the Bible says. But, but, it doesn't matter, but, but, mother, father, sister, brother, cousin, what have you, you know, nice person. I'm going to go back to scripture. Did they confess Jesus, right? Jesus Christ in the flesh. I'm not going to partner with them. I'm not going to suggest that my team of believers partner with them. But do you realize this is a big name? And if this big name is not about Jesus Christ, I don't want no parts of that big name. You know what they could do for you. I know what they can do for me. But God didn't call me. There's not one celebrity that God has called me to in the spiritual realm at this time. Now, maybe in the future, but as at this time of this recording. Mm-mm. No approval. There is not one family member that I, that I had that I used to speak to years ago. That I'm now permitted to let in my inner circle. Not one. The only ones are the ones that are already in the circle. No new ones. Okay. That's God. I can tell you also from personal experience. That God has not released me. To do anything more than what you see between these two channels. In addition to the other platforms. What is already there. Anything else lately. Has just been me just putting something here 
or they're testing some things out. There's the test. There's the test. And I said, well, Lord, this is what I'm doing. The Lord didn't say, nope, that's not what I want you to do. Instead, he told me, he said, test. So I'm thinking I'm doing something. Oh, I'm just doing this thing, right? Because I want to do it or whatever. And the Lord said, "Mm, you're not, you're not totally alone in this. I'm giving you wiggle room to test. It's like when you first learn a software program, right? Or you learn something on VR or you learn something over the internet or wherever you learn it. And you get this opportunity to just play around with the tools. You know, you get the opportunity to check out the demo. You know, you get the free trial. You're testing. That's what you're doing. And then when it's time for something bigger and better and greater or whatever else, God will let you know. God will let you know when it's time to partner with the right people. God will let you know. Because we know that Satan disguises himself as an angel of light. And this is why it's no surprise, according to 2 Corinthians 11, 14 and 15, it's no surprise if his servants also disguise themselves as servants of righteousness. Their ends will correspond to their deeds. 1 Corinthians 12, 10 to another, the working of miracles, right? Those gifts that I talked about earlier. Well, you've got individuals who God is going to assign miracle gifts. Okay, we're wow I pray for him and that's a miracle that he got better Um, another prophecy oh my goodness you're able to predict some things according to the will of God absolutely he's going to gift another the ability to distinguish between spirits that's that gift of of discernment okay that is what we all should be wanting (laughs) right God has given that gift over my years Once I finally decided to take him seriously Um, to another various kinds of tongues. Some of us, right? You'll hear the different tongue languages Um, and then to another, the interpretation of tongues. And there have been those who have come through and actually interpreted the tongues as God led them to. Okay. And when they interpreted them, it wasn't for actually what was going on here in America. Some of them, they interpreted the tongues for their country and they knew what to do. Now that's the power of God. So not everything is about praise and worship and speaking in tongues. Sometimes there is this other conversation that's going on in the speaking of tongues to alert someone to what is happening in their homeland. Interesting enough. Well, I just want to wrap this message up with Jesus John 14 and 6 Jesus said to him I am the way and the truth and the life no one comes to the father except through me okay that's good enough (laughs) I thank you as always for taking time out to listen you've been listening to YouTube in Enterprise 7 feel free to like subscribe comment we do welcome giving on this channel there are links to give to this channel 